Good morning, everybody, and thank you to IAC for giving us a possibility to share our experience. Uh, Orange uh, is operating mainly in Europe, I would say in seven of the 27, 28, sorry, 28 uh, European markets, and increasingly in Africa and the Middle East. So um, it's always difficult to speak about uh, distinguished speakers, which have given you already a flavor um, uh, uh, of your print regulation to uh, an audience which is truly global and not necessarily attuned to the mysteries of uh, European regulation. Uh, um, maybe, um, um, and also maybe something to, to, to say about, I would say, the, the, um, our business, I would say, our vision. I would say we are the vision of uh, a convergent operator, uh, fixed on mobile. Uh, this is our definition of conversion so far. Maybe content will be added to that. Uh, but today, it's uh, essentially fixed mobile conversion in all of our markets. Uh, uh, on markets where we are the, uh, let's say, considered uh, as a, a historic incumbent operator, but also in, a, in the markets where we are a mobile operator. So what are the main characteristics of European regulation for our debate today? Um, it applies to very fragmented to very fragmented markets um, uh, with little common regulatory culture. I would say uh, you, you have the you may be familiar with concept of uh, English garden or jardin à la française, but this is true. I mean, we do not have a common regulatory uh, regulatory culture in Europe uh, between I would say uh, uh, freedom and. Uh, let's say, uh, regulatory or regulation of outcomes. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have to deal with a complex uh, framework with some tension between two guiding principles. Uh, competition on one hand, this was uh, the founding principle of our framework, uh, and it is still today, but also um, um, a tendency to look at our networks as public goods. Uh, so, and you see the tension. I mean, you want competition on one hand, you want uh, entrepreneurs um, uh, exactly, I would say, using their freedom, but on the other hand, there is a preference for regulating the outcomes. So this is one of the contradictions we, we are facing in Europe, in, in Europe and which helps understand uh, some of the developments today. Um, as I was, say, I was uh, as I said, I was say one, the founding principle was access regulation. That's what makes probably European regulation very specific compared to other forms of regulation worldwide. Quite strict regulation with good outcomes initially, you would say, uh, uh, and uh, this access regulation from a static perspective delivers, I would say, really good outcomes. I would say competition, freedom of choice, low prices to consumers. When it becomes tricky is that when it comes to new investments, mm, uh, because uh, this strict regulation deprives the investor uh, from a lot of natural incentives, some such as differentiation or even profit. So uh, the outcome uh, of this regulation uh, has been quite well uh, described by, I would say, by my predecessors. Uh, uh, if I have both sides, I would say, with figures, I probably would have used the same. I would say uh, uh, a huge difference in investment intensity, uh, but also something which is striking: uh, more than a decade of decreasing revenues. I would say we are not a growing industry anymore. Uh, this looks a bit strange, it's probably uh, very specific to Europe, but the decays of the industry has been decreasing in Europe for years now. Uh, and it might have an impact on, in, on investment, probably. Um, so what are the trends uh, after the, uh, what are the trends? The first objective we have as an industry is the transition uh, to fiber, uh, as we do believe, as orange, fiber to the home. Um, and this transition, of course, is not easy in a context of, of regulated access uh, as an investor is uh, caught in a uh, network of, of constraints, uh, price regulation, margin squeeze tests, and uh, of course, competitors uh, are not so interested invested either um, as uh, the regulator, as the regulation 
is if you start regulating an infrastructure, I would say it, uh, this regulation risks to become uh, the risks become self-fulfilling. Of course, I mean uh, uh, there is nothing as stable as access regulation if you do not uh, tilt the regulation in the right direction. So the other um, uh, I was mentioning uh, fixed mobile convergence as another trend, uh, and um, this is not something which will disappear. It's probably an area where we might be in advance uh, compared to other continents. Uh, fixed mobile convergence has become a standard, what we call the foreplay, uh, um, voice, internet access, voice, television, and mobile is there. It has been there in a, in a number of our markets now for years. So, and in this context, you see that um, unless access regulation can be considered a problem from the investor perspective. Uh, there is still a case of access. So imagine uh, a market I would say, where all players would have to behave in a convergent way. Without, ac I would say, without access, you will end, for example, with the mobile market structure reflecting the fixed market structure. So, uh, and it is probably something nobody uh, can really desire to end up with, in some places, only one mobile network, in some areas, only with two. So uh, there is a case for access, but of course, this access, as it was devised 20 years ago, is not uh, the right way forward. So what was trying the Commission to do uh, with a proposal? We are more positive, I, I can be maybe a bit more positive than my predecessors on, on, the, uh, on the Commission's proposal. It was an excellent one on uh, uh, first on spectrum, uh, uh, we have lived so far in Europe without a, a sound regulatory framework for 2G, 3G and 4G, but e e it's time to move to something which is a bit more solid, um, uh, harmonized uh, principles for license auctions, also for license renewals. I would say we, are, we are now in a time where the 2G and 3G license are being renewed, Having some more certainty, I would say, on those renewables is essential. And unfortunately, what we have seen, I would say it has been said already, is a lot, a lot of resistance, um, unfortunately, by member states. You know, member states are part of the, uh, are, are, are making the law uh, with, together with the parliament in Europe. So, and so far, uh, their reaction has not been muted. It has been clearly negative. Um, the commission's proposal on access was also good. Uh, there were a lot of smart ideas. Um, to take into account uh, the increasingly uh, fragmented uh, fragmentation of owner, network ownership, which is happening in Europe. Uh, um, it was very easy to regulate uh, a, a telephone monopoly. It's increasingly difficult to regulate a market where you have a lot of infrastructure owners. Uh, also, a growing infrastructure competition, which is just chance. Uh, this growing competition should is it an opportunity to relax the regulation. And this is what the Commission wanted to do, uh, guide regulators, uh, I'm, I'm aware I'm speaking essentially to regulators today, uh, guide regulators um, uh, with a view to, to relax the regulation where it was possible, uh, to facilitate network competition where it is possible. Um, uh, very smart ideas, for example, uh, relying uh, when there is only room for one uh, network, typically one fiber network, for, for different reasons, relying on co-investment. Co-investment is a good way to deliver, uh, it's much better than access, uh, it delivers a, a much more sustainable um, market structure. Uh, sustainable form of market com com competition. Uh, sorry, of sustainable competition, relying on long time rights. Uh, so a very smart move. You align the interests of all the operators, and you share costs. Um, we have to share costs if you see uh, if you uh, look at the level of investment. So very good idea. The Commission wanted to build this co investment as an incentive, as an alternative form of regulation. This is tr truly uh, a, a good idea. Um, um, unfortunately, this, uh, all those good ideas um, risk uh, to remain symbolic. They probably will stay in the code, um, but uh, let's say at a trace level, as uh, chemists tend to say. I mean, I would say there will be the name, there will be an article, um, but uh, probably no substance, uh, because this has not been uh, 
possible to convince so far, uh, to convince lawmakers that, uh, and sometimes regulators, uh, that um, they, if operators, competitors were ready to commit for 20 years on a fiber investment, if they were ready to change, to adapt their architecture, they needed some regulatory certainty for more than three years. But unfortunately, this looks impossible in Europe to get this form of regulatory certainty. Um, um, so we, we are disappointed, I would say. We share the disappointment which has been expressed already by our colleagues. Um, uh, most of the investment incentives which have been proposed by the Commission risk to be diluted to a large extent. There was still some room of maneuver, um, but uh, there is a risk that the Commission, that the European Union doesn't deliver. Um, uh, maybe one point on services, and it's interesting. Uh, we know that I would say the, the concept of services becomes increasingly difficult to describe. Uh, in Europe, we live with the concept of electronic communication services. And um, so there have been a lot of discussions as to whether, as to what those electronic communication services are. Hmm? Um, are the future 5G services all electronic communication services, for example? Are M2M services electronic communication services? Yes, probably, but should they be regulated as the telephony was? Um, this is a, a problem we have with sector-specific regulation in general. Uh, uh, if we turn to sophisticated electro I would say sector-specific regulation, especially in our sector, um, there is a risk that you apply rules of uh, which were completely, I would say, irrelevant in the context of telephony to the Internet of Things. It is something which is logic, yes, but the risk, there is a real risk here. Hmm? Uh, also a risk, is, the risk is to, to regulate what should not be regulated. The risk is also to create an unlevel playing field uh, between telcos uh, and, and other operators. This is the same kind of risk which has been addressed by Wolfgang Kopf in the, in the context of e-privacy. I mean, why having a, a sector-specific uh, instrument uh, to regulate metadata once you have an horizontal framework which deals with all kind of so-called sensitive data, uh, uh, personal data. So w this is uh, something which is difficult to understand. Uh, so we had been very positive on the, what the Commission proposed on the uh, uh, on, uh, on the network regulation. In this context, it's hard to understand uh, what what is the true goal behind I would say this uh, e-privacy directive. So. Um, we, we would, we, we do believe that, especially in the context of digital, uh, the future of regulation is not sector-specific regulation. Uh, it's uh, probably a slow decrease, uh, uh, or it could be a rapid decrease, um, a decrease of uh, sector-specific regulation to rely more in the future on uh, horizontal regulation. So, um, um, uh, I think I will. Um, um, uh, close, I would say, my in remarks at this point of time and uh, answer questions uh, if they should be. Uh, 